There we go. Good. Uh, the good kill all core audio never never fails. All right. Last night did a live stream about tech. It was leading up to this. It's effectively I'm building a keynote presentation for technology forum. It's for the sports forum. And there's a bunch of forums. Um, but this is talking about the. Um, I'm sorry. These things I can't even hear. The technology forum is talking about everything from NFTs, QR codes, to the current state of modern technology. And I have a talk during it about why modern technology is stagnant. Why has it evolved in about 15 years? There's been a lot of advancements that are very small, but the technology as a whole is built to pigeonhole us in a certain set of services, certain set of protocols that can be tracked, uh, packaged, and sold. So my talk is about how to get out of that. And so I wanted to kind of share a little bit of this. I'm going to see, yeah. Uh, effectively, I was operating in a vacuum before. My talk last night got some interest on social media, so I wanted to uh, open this up. I'll have this open here. I'm going to open up chat on Twitch and on Discord. Uh, let's go no fill because I'm going to be building this thing. No shadow and uh, a line. Yeah, if there's anything you want to chime in about, feel free. But I'm just going to be working on this for the next half an hour. Oh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. But you get to see how I work in this process. Um, these go green just so I can see that line. Is that right? That's close enough. Close enough. Copy B. This is for a presentation. No one's going to be doing a screen by screen comparison of these two. And if they are, they're, they should be doing better things with their time. As I say, as I work on this keynote as a, uh, during a live stream. <laughs> yeah, what is that about glass houses? All right. All right. Just going to go. That is not how I want that corner to look. Yeah, I gotcha. Delete, delete, let's see how that works. That's not how I wanted that corner to go. I'm gonna get rid of you two, delete, and delete. That is not how I want that corner to look. How about that? How about making that a solid sharp point? Thank you. And how about making this one a solid sharp point? Uh, sharp point. Look at that, that boy is thick. I got straight. That's good enough. Perfect. I'm gonna do that easier over here. I just bring this here. Really? Oh my gosh, it's R. Not so easy, you know? All right. The band starts there. Delete you, delete. Perfect. Let's start up here. Oh my God. Please, there we go. That'll be good enough for now. Oy, oy, oy. All right, uh, I'm just creating a representation of a phone that I don't have to buy. I'm sure I could just buy this. Color fill is white. Actually, color fill is uh, black. And then the outline is white. No shadow line is white, correct? White. Mm -hmm. This is the V30. This is the phone I talk about during the presentation uh, because it's the phone I own. It's my favorite phone of all time. And uh, it's funny, I'm talking about my favorite phone of all time in a presentation that I said all phones suck. I see the irony in that, trust me. But. Uh, 
Yeah, it's about how technology right now is meant to uh, track, basically get the information for you. It was cell phone based first, so they could track us on a number of text or amount of data used. Now it's about where we're going, what we're buying, what we're seeing. Um, make this a sharp point. <laughs> make this a sharp point. Uh, sharp point. Make this a sharp point. Make this a sharp point. Make that a sharp point, right? This right. Delete. Perfect. You see now I've just made a speaker. That's funny. Stretch you out a little bit and then stretch you down. This won't be a one for one comparison on an LG phone. I just want to get it out there so I don't have to buy one of these again. That's why I am. If I can make a cell phone like this one, I will just do this. Um, make editable. Oh, move you here. That's what it's supposed to look like, right? Move you here. Great. Delete. Delete. Bump. Get that rounding there. Again, this is not science. This is close enough. Is that right? Make editable. You. You. Oh, gracious. You're terrible. I think that's right. Make editable. That's right. Perfect. Whoop. Let us take this and stretch that to there. Let's delete you. Move you up to the top. Move you here. Let's delete you. Let's move you here. That seems like a weird. Why is that not straight? Because this is the phone. That's not me. The phone seems the the render of the phone seems to be off. Is that right? It seems hard to believe, but yeah, it does seem hard to believe. Delete. Yeah, it does. What the heck is that about? I don't know if you can see this at all on the screen if it's too tight. It's... Let's get rid of you. Delete. Thank you. There we go. It's not off. Delete. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Can I delete you? That's what I want. Thank you. Yeah, it's really weird. This thing's really wonky. You see how it kicks out right here? This is getting a big old butt on it. I'm just going to move this up so it doesn't have that much room to move. I'm going to get rid of you. Delete. Delete. Again, close enough. Two new messages. Who is messaging me? Oh, it's about my talk. How funny is that? The thing I'm working on right now. It says, you're fired. I'm watching you on... <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm not fired. They couldn't fire me. Um, they need me. All right. That's good enough. I'm going to take that. I think that's what we're going to need. And we're going to do, do this. We're going to say, um, that's fine. Get rid of you. Great. You see what I just did? I just created a phone. And then we're going to make the line. Uh, oh, come on. Black. And there we have a phone, you see. There we have a telephone. We're going to group those assets. Great. There's my phone. So now I have a telephone, and uh, this is what I'm trying to get out here. We go, it, uh, copy V. This is an iPhone four. You'll see the madness here, and you're like, "Well, these." Well, I don't know why designers get paid so much because it takes 
slip in so much time to build these assets, even when you're just like 23 skidooing them. If you're doing it for a presentation that might be aired um, on YouTube, you don't want to have assets that you don't own because that could be taken down or demonetized or you could be sued. Who wants that? No fill. We're going to make the border green and we're going to say no shadow. All right, there we go. Uh, that's, that's a rectangle. No fill, no shadow, line. All right. Absolutely, I think that goes down to here. And again, no one's gonna be measuring these things. And what's awesome is that I actually have two assets now that I've created. Hang on, whoop. I have two assets that I've created. Let's go to advance, let's go to no fill. Actually, we're going to do advanced gradient fill. We're going to do it the opposite way, right? We're going to take this white and then we're going to turn that white, correct? And then this circle will be black. Line, black, no shadow. Is that right? Let's see. That is correct. Perfect. Okay, let's go middle, middle. Let's go back to my V30 asset. I'm gonna say ungroup for just a second. We're gonna collect those guys. Copy V. We're gonna group these guys back again. <coughs> Excuse me. Got the COVID right before my talk. Over. Up. Group these assets. Group, and then we'll minimize those. Come on. That is tiny. And that line, let's ungroup those. Make that line less than one point. Way less than one point. Perfect. Okay, now we can get rid of the phone, I think. Can we? Yeah, we can. Black, great. We've now created a phone. Okay, now if this was black, let's make this, uh, let's make the line white and the background back, black. Um, here you go. Back. Then we'll make this where <laughs> where'd you go there you are uh, line is none fill is white perfect and then we can do an outline around this one it's a white outline and that's going to be and then this has got to be flipped over like just to give it some dim dimension and depth let's go whoop and then let's take this Oops. <laughs> That's good enough. And if you're worried about it, we can dim that a little bit. Dim that asset. There you go. So it's not. Yeah, perfect. So you see now I have a phone. That only took 15, 10 minutes. Anyways, whatever. Uh, group. And now I won't be sued. 10 minutes to save me a year in court. All right. So this size comparison is absolutely not on point. So we go here and find out how big the, it's 4.5 inches by 2.31 inches. So we're gonna change our preferences. Oh, right there. Uh, slide rulers, we're gonna change those to inches. All right, let's go to 2 point, it's uh, 4.5 by 2.31. Actually, can I change that to millimeters? Let's do that. Not that it's flat or even, but hang on. Oh, preferences. Can I get it into millimeters? I think I do it that way, but how far can I zoom in on this? Yeah, that's right. Huh. 
Do I want to do it that way? I'm going to do inches because I'm stupid English. Stupid English. Okay, 4.5 inches. So we're going to create a an asset that it's this one right here. And we're going to turn this this way. Whoop. And we're going to say 4.5 inches. Oh my God, it's right on the <laughs> It's the right size. What the? How is that possible? 4.5. So now we know that's right. That's crazy. I think it's just because I pulled the ass. This is going to be enormous. What's the size of a uh, LGV30? LGV30 size. Ah, oh, great. That is. Great. Give me US specifications, please. These are all in millimeters. There we go. 597, 297. So five, almost six, six inches. All right. Let's go copy B, rotate. Let's get you six inches. How big? Wait, 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 wait. It was six by three. Let's see if that goes to three when I turn it. That's too big, but that's right. There you go. So it's the right dimensions. Perfect. Excellent. I feel good about that. It's good enough. We'll say the difference between the phones that we used to have. Good lord. <laughs> Look at that. That's insane. How close was I with my estimation last night? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, group. How close? Oh, a bit off. Well, based on the size of the screen, it's not so bad. Uh, ungroup. Not bad. Not bad. It's pretty decent. Okay. Great. We've got these two assets created. So what I talked about last night is having, if you missed the stream last night, how could you, how, how dare you miss my stream last night? We talked about the connectivity of your device and your device is attached to you. It's not a phone. We need, we need to stop talking about phones. It's like talking about, uh, we have, outdated vernacular our technology has advanced past our ability to communicate about it it's uh, when you were talking about modems connecting to like rotary phone lines pulse phone lines we are to that point uh when we're talking about the wrong things we're talking about 5g which are have nothing to do with us it has to do with new technology that will be built that we will access we need to talk about the things that we utilize this tech for so that's why I'm doing this because I can go off on a tangent in a heartbeat. Talked about having a device, this guy right here, which would be the size, this little guy, this little thing that would fit in your pocket or in your backpack or on your person. This is your device and that could be uh, this size, which is smaller. I have, a, I have the SE here. This is bigger than I'm thinking it should be. It should be smaller than this. It would be like a, a drive that would require something like a, there would be enough to hold storage. Uh, so it could be like a personal server, but it would be a small form factor that you could carry around, uh, like a maybe a couple credit cards thick. Credit cards, perfect example. Everybody knows what a credit card is and credit card size. Have something small that's on your person that has data. That data could be everything from very personal info to just basic info could be like if this wallet or this device is lost return it to this person or if i wanted to make some payments but only at certain locations having payment information that is accessible only to certain people or while i'm out accessible to these things unless i needed to trigger another action that device is attached to you like a personal black box and then you'd get a validator a validator would be the thing that attaches it to you. So if someone takes your wallet or steals that thing, uh, 
they can't access it. They need to have the, the key that allows it to be like, it, it could be near field communication key, but basically some kind of way that it identifies it as you. And that could be done by inserting a simple chip into your eye. <laughs> so no, it's like uh, we talked about like how dogs have the chips that you can just scan them. But in humans, that's very invasive. So we talked about putting something like maybe you get a ring that has that communication in it and you put it on your hands. Now, of course, because someone can cut off your finger and take that or whatever. There's better minds, bigger minds, things that you could come up with like, well, okay, well, maybe it has something to do with the, the thumbprint feedback, like how it reads that and it has to, be, like, or the face scanning technology. Again, those things are very invasive. I was just thinking about a key. It could be as simple as this. Could be, uh, could be anything, but, it, but you could attach it to the arm of your glasses or but uh, it has to be just something that you would have on your person at all times that allows this device to recognize it's on your person. You have full access to these things when you need them. Now that's just saying you have access where the other pieces come from. And again, I'm so sorry. People who didn't watch last night's stream are going to be a little bit like, what is this all about? The challenge right now is that all of your information exists between com with companies who are interested in selling it. And I know Apple sells it and Google sells it and Microsoft sells it and Facebook sells it. Everybody's taking you and selling it. And you're like, well, I'm smarter than advertising. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, or I have nothing to hide. Like that kind of idea. Like well, who cares if they have this info? I'm just a boring person. But it came to me that... I had to opt out of something on my, uh, what is it called? A pest control treatment. We have a pest control treatment because we are on a wetlands. So we try to put a perimeter up uh, so that we don't get earwigs and centipedes uh, all year round. That's horrible. Um, so anyways, the that company sent me a notification saying, you need to opt out of communications. I'm like, what the heck is that about? And when I went into their communications opt-out form, which didn't work, it didn't allow me to do it because it just refreshed into nothing. But when I did it, it's like there were four checkboxes. One was a legal checkbox. That was, I'll show it. Why, why am I doing this? I'm not making it up. It's stupid. Uh, let's see if I can get there. Excuse me. I'm going to put this over here so you don't have to see me do this. Let's see if I can get that here. There we go. Hey, there's me. Again, I'm, it's insane. Uh, is this right? There it is. I thought I'll log in here. Okay. I'm going to say existing customers, log in. Just, it's worth it. You can see where all this is coming from. Uh, and it is active. Oh. Never mind. It's the main website. I don't even have to log in. Okay, I go down to the bottom of this page and here it is. Whoop. Now I got it to here from this is Aptive Pest, pest Control. Um, and they're out of Utah. I have no idea. They're a new company. They're just a way. A minus rating. Look at that. That's really good. This graphic is stretched. Like that's why I wouldn't stretch. I wouldn't trust them because their their graphics team is suspect. Uh, this is a problem, by the way, too. I'm on a sidebar right now, but this is hilarious. I was on their, this page here. Do I have a message from them? Of course not. Uh, but it's all sports related and it's all like golf and sports. It has nothing to do with pest control. Uh, best in the business. Here's me golfing. I don't feel confident in this company at all. Looking at their social media, their social media sucks. Um, I canceled, by the way. I sent a notification saying that that's it. Because of this, because not because they golf or because they are sports, but because, do not sell my personal information. This came to me in an email. And it's like, hey, uh, this is what you need to know. Uh, right to know, right to deletion, right to opt out of the sale of your personal information. So I asked for this. I'm gonna say, John, uh, well, all my information just personally popped up. Great. Uh, uh, I'm going to say John Jacob Jinkelheimer Schmidt, but I'm just going to put my name in there. Uh, one, six, whoop, Yep, got it. Perfect. 
this is all fake. Okay. Now, when I go here, I filled out the information, right? I filled out the information at the top. That's business line. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, uh, what is your preferred, let's say phone and email. Are you submitting, are you submitting this request as an authorized agent for the above consumer? As an author? Yes. Oh, for God's sakes. I declare under penalty of perjury of law, the state of California is true and correct. Yes. So my name's on there, but when I click submit, It deletes the form nothing there so it doesn't even allow me to freaking opt out so so you have a reason to know a deletion request and when you click on reason to know it's like hey what personal information would you like to receive the categories of personal information you have on file about me and the specific pieces of my personal information you have about me this is a pest control company this is a benign organization like who cares it's like my mailman. They just have my address. What are you going to do? No. Because, going back to here, this device, the phone. Let's go to this device. Let's go to the right one. Because they're walking around with a phone on them, every time they come to my house, they have the date that they came to my house. They have the address. They might have a photo record, which they do, because they take a picture of the job that's done. They have the record of them walking around the perimeter of my house. They have a record of, like, the size length whatever the heck it is of my house and the, the frequency of which I show up that sounds pretty weird that they have that but it's basically because they have a phone in their pocket or because they're tracking that data that is attached to my home if that data gets compromised they have uh, the ability to know a great deal of information about me I've been uh, uh, I've had somebody, I put a post on Reddit and the first comment came back with my address, my physical address saying, Hey, nice house you have there. It's freaking horrifying because they were able to glean that data from the video that I had just posted. And so if that's happening from one video, the amount of data here that they are able to glean is astronomical. They're taking that information and potentially selling it or covering their ass in case it does get stolen, which I totally understand. This is why these phones are, we need to be extremely mindful of them because why do we need them to know the other thing? And you all have, anybody who drives a car here, how many people are here? Five, God, you guys are the best, five. I'd love feedback, but the, here's the deal. If five of you, if any of you drive a car, if any of you own insurance, I'm sure you've noticed that they're like, hey, a couple years ago, T-Mobile and all the phone companies were saying, you can put this little device in your car and it will track, you know, get a safe driving record with this and you can get percentage off your insurance. So it started with the cellular phone companies where they were using their phone's data to track, you know, if you're safe driving, your speed, all of those things. If you were in an accident, that information could be passed on to your insurance provider or would be passed on to your insurance provider knowing if, how fast you were going, knowing if you were putting on the brakes, knowing a bunch of information about you just from that device that you had plugged into your car. My insurance company made that mandatory. And the thing is, is it knows if you're using an app, it knows if you're listening to music, it knows all of the stuff that's going on in your phone. It gets a pool of that data. So if you are in your car and you switch the song, which I can do on my steering wheel, I switch the song, and I'm in a car accident, that data goes to my insurance provider. My insurance provider says, ooh, it looks like you changed the track a second before or five seconds before you were in an accident. Were you paying attention to your phone? You can't say there was somebody else in the car because there's no other track there. You can't say there's a kid in the car. They, they, all of that stuff can be used against you and to deny you claims. So they're offering you, now that started with the cell phone companies, which we said no. But now every insurance company that I've seen from Progressive to Allstate to State Farm is asking you to install the app and get a 5% off of your bill. So they call up their existing customers, ask them for a percentage off. or like, we have a special deal. You just have to install this app while you're driving. But it's a way to deny you uh, coverage if you're in an accident. It can say like, well, you were listening to this or your, your audio, your Bluetooth volume was all the way up. You probably were distracted. So there's way too much information being given about you to deny you service to pu effectively punish you with data. And it, 
Again, diatribing. We just had a problem with Wells Fargo where they absorbed our loan, our home loan. They then asked for two additional payments, first and last months. On a loan they absorbed, we had to pay an additional $5,000 to Wells Fargo. Who has $5,000 sitting around? Like if this is happening, they're absorbing loans all the time. So we contacted a lawyer and the lawyer's like, no one's, no lawyer's gonna take on Wells Fargo. So the, all these companies, what I'm saying, T-Mobile, uh, AT&T, Apple, Google, Wells Fargo, the insurance providers, unless you're part of a massive class action lawsuit, no lawyer is going to take them on. And the best chances are, hey, you got us. Like Wells Fargo has been like, hey, you got us, you got us. And they wound up paying a, a settlement that's far in to the damage that has been done. The number of people that lost their homes, the number of people that kicked out, it, 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 it's not commensurate. So my whole crux of this, this entire presentation is about how do we take that back? How do we get our data away from companies like Aptiv and Allstate and AT&T and other companies that don't begin with A? Like we need to start thinking about securing who we are. And again, if you have nothing to hide, I don't have anything to hide. I mean, statute of limitations, what is that on murder? Five years, three years, forever. Wait, there is no statue? So I have nothing to hide. Um, but the reality is like, if you, if, if you have nothing to hide, you have a family, you have security requirements. Like, hey, I've got to take care of my, uh, you know, I have a wetland behind my house. I've got to make sure that nobody knows a porn of entry to get into my house or knows when I'm not home or knows like, oh, hey, they stopped their service for this. Uh, now I know they're not at home or they're, uh, now I have a connection to their, uh, nest <laughs> or their, their August lock or whatever the heck it is because of the, the compromise, like your phone has way too much power, way too much information. So my whole goal is to pull that away. And that's what this is. This whole technology is you come up with a, an idea for a black box, a small little personal item, like a wallet that you would carry around with you that would have your information that you would be willing to share, your black box. Hey, I'm in a car accident. My body is totally eviscerated. I hit a gasoline truck and I was blown to smithereens. Horrible. The least concern is that your data survives. <laughs> but the idea is like, if you were in an accident, you could have this device that allows a medical person on site to scan and really quickly identify, this is who this is, this is who their next of kin is, this is who their person is. Like they're able to do that by just like a RF reader, whatever the heck it is. Um, now I'm not coming up with the solution for this, I'm showing this is the kind of how, how you start this conversation. So there's many ways to do it. There's smarter people that know how to do this. But the idea is that you have information that's available to a select few or the general population, and then you have information that's available to a little bit further, like r retailers that you frequent, re retailers that you've greenlit, you can allow them to authorize payment through an RF. And that RF can be done through, again, something as simple as you have a ring that has a reader in it that connects to your device. I, I just thinking a phone is a screen. I have a phone from 2016, and again, everybody who watched this stream, I'm thinking I'm losing people because I'm all over the place. Where in the heck am I? Five people. God, you guys are the best. I am so happy. I don't know who's there. Thank you so much for sticking with me here. But uh, phones are just a screen at this point. My phone, I don't answer anymore because it's nine times out of 10 spam. So I don't use my phone for a phone. I use it as a screen. And I'm like, okay, I gotta stop using that. So what do I do? I get myself a watch an Apple watch or Samsung watch. And uh, when I'm talking to somebody, I get a vibration. I don't look at my phone. Someone's talking to me and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm not gonna look at my phone. I'm gonna be very, very attentive. And then the first thing you do is like, oh, notification on my watch. What's worse? Picking up your phone and being like, oh, sorry, someone may be calling me. Or someone's talking and you're like, I think that's worse. <laughs> I think this is somehow worse <laughs> to look at your watch. What are you saying? So the idea is for um, to come up with ways to put screens in the screen size you want. Because I think that's a lot of what's happening with phones is they're getting, you got bigger phones and 
and you have tablets that are a certain degree. Like people are looking for screens that fit their needs. I'm going through this again. I've got oh, six, six people. This is amazing. This is my highest stream of all time. Uh, the idea is that when you have devices, they're not just like the, the problem right now is when you have a device like a phone and you have a tablet and you have a computer, they're effectively copies of each other. Your phone has Trello or what Evernote on it. Your tablet has Evernote on it. Your computer has Evernote or Trello on it. Evernote changed their model so you can only have two devices. That's problematic, right? So if you have a phone and a tablet that you use regularly, if you want to use it on your computer, you have to pay a premium for that. So the idea is that your phone, your tablet, your computer are all one. They're all the same. They're just processors. So your phone would be a, so it would be RAM and it would be a processor, a CPU that would run certain things it would run pretty much everything like the m1 chip is a good a good example m1 chip runs pretty pretty well across the spectrum you can get an imac wait you can get an imac desktop you can get a mac book air and a macbook pro they really run the same amount of efficiency it's the throughput it's the buses that change based on the, the what you pay into them you get a higher ram count in that and bigger buses for the higher quality machines but the m1 chip is a great equalizer so my thought is you create a device like that the m1 is already created it already exists you have a phone that is able to run apps but when you are wanting to use your tablet you can take your phone again just hear me out this is not invented yet this is why I'm just, just kind of putting forth this notion of the technology form you take your phone and you plug it in to the back of your pad, or tablet, whatever that is. And the RAM and the CPU can be used like an eGPU for your tablet. So your tablet now becomes super powered where you have your tablet's processor and your phone's processor. They're the same device because the information is being fed from, it's being validated and fed from your black box. And you're like, well, that seems really convoluted and complex, kind of. It, it all exists now, like this technology of wirelessly sending information between the two devices. I mean, I can send a device via Wi-Fi from one device to another. I can send it via Bluetooth. I can send it through several different uh, types of ID between two devices. And so what I'm thinking is you have a, a secure device that you have in your person that is validated and verified through, you know, just basically being attached to you. It can hold up to, I mean, I, again, I shared this. This is 400 gigabytes, 400 gigabytes, and it's the size of the, the tip of a pen. There we go. Tip of a pen. There we go. That's it. So that's 400 gigabytes. My Mac M1 that I just got from Costco in September has 128 gigabytes in it. Like, this can be put on you. You can store a lot of information on there. there it's going to get bigger, but you would have control and lock that down. So... Um, again, this is why I'm doing this because this conversation can go everywhere. I just need to boil it down. So what we're talking about is taking your phone, plugging it in and having that iPad utilize the power in sequence or it just amplifies the power of your iPad. So your iPad is now more powerful when you have these devices and you want to sit at your computer. These devices have existed for a while in the Android space where you can plug your Android phone in and use it like a desktop. You could plug this in to either your a desktop PC or your computer. And it works like, again, a GP, eGPU where it's using the processing power, using the RAM of these other devices that you own. You don't need to have three licenses for, for a higher pay, paid subscription for services. And you can use apps in the... You could use Trello in a mobile form. You can use Trello in a desktop form. It could display differently, but you don't need three different versions or you don't need to have per device subscriptions. Uh, and it would make your machines more powerful. It would extend the life. It would push them further and give them all a place. Like you can take your phone out, which I, yeah, I got to come up with a different name for phone, but you would take this device out if you wanted to just be mobile, take it on the road to have a screen. doesn't have to have a phone in it. Just has to have a screen and a connection to this device. 
your tablet or whatever if you want to do work or how if you want to watch shows whatever the heck you want to do with it when you go out it's it is tethered to this black box that's on your person is uh basically the size of screen that you feel comfortable carrying around uh, that's all i'm trying to get we don't need a phone anymore uh, some people do some people use the telephone but most people that i know that have a phone text TikTok. That, that's more camera than phone at this point the phone is the technology the cellular technology you don't need phones you just need like a a device that allows you to connect to the cloud that has the ability for you to enter commands keyboard commands whatever so the point is i'm thinking that technology right now is in a very very corporate owned place your stuff is you're throwing it out there we're selling our information we're giving our information away for free effectively and that will effectively come back to bite us in uh whether it be in our children who have no autonomy, <laughs> whether it be in the ability to be like, oh, you're a problem. Well, guess what? Uh, we saw that he was driving with this. Uh, again, it's the Simpsons episode where they, Homer Simpson saw the aliens uh, impersonating politi politicians and he's like, what are you going to do? You're going to kill me? They're like, no, we're just going to make you uh, drunk and we're going to kick you out so no one believes what you're talking about. The thing is that you can get into trouble and they can they all have like so many different ways you know you could protest something like hey i don't think you should wear masks in schools i'm not protesting that i'm not protesting that at all but i'm saying you could say i don't feel like wearing masks in school or even worse i listen to the joe rogan podcast again i do not i'm just saying these as examples and somebody's like oh that person listened to it well guess what he was driving uh, above the speed limit he keeps driving above the speed limit. Hey, uh, Mr. Police Officer in the area, you may want to keep an eye on this guy. He leaves his house every day at 830, and he exceeds the speed limit right between these two spots. So just hang out there. Uh, and it wouldn't be like a call. It would be done automatically. So it's a, I think we're in a very troublesome place where I don't think anybody is really seeing that problem yet, but it's really giving these people in power the the elites these one these people that have a lot of power it gives them even more control and i'm trying to take some of that back because we have the technology it does exist it's just not mainstream nor will it really be until we start taking this back so that's what my talk of the technology forum is i actually have to go i have an 11 o'clock you five are the freaking best i will send you guys little gifts if you tell me who you are wherever you're watching this throw a comment up I'm going to send you guys a little something because you are the best. Guys, gals, I don't know who's watching. I keep saying guys. It's like my uniform. It's my cis white male way of addressing people. Peeps, is that gender non-specific? Anyways, you five who stood by this are awesome. I'll check comments or whatever, but I've got to go. I'm late. <laughs> Bye.